Kara, why did you want to get involved with the Autism Speaks campaign? Well, we have twin boys of four years old now, uh, Eli and Leo, and um, we got, through my wife's research, we got Leo diagnosed at two and a half years old. Uh, he got on a spectrum, a minor spectrum of autism, and it's a, it's a cause that's close to my heart uh, because we have a son, but I think it's, I think it's important for people to be aware of the, the cause and to be aware of autism and not to be afraid of the, of, of the of your kid being on the spectrum. He's been working now with uh, therapist Christina for a couple of months. How much progress have you seen? Oh, enormous. Like in, in three months that we've, three or four months that we've worked with Christina, we've seen so much progress in him as far as three months ago he didn't do any, any potty and now he's fully full potty trained just with their help um, and just behavioral wise with other kids. Now he's expressing his, 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 uh, his feelings and now he's, he, you know, he has his toys, now he's sharing his toys and because he, it was his stuff, now he understands that he needs to share. But with her help and, uh, and she's been great, he understands that and now it's still a progress, uh, a process, but he's, he's finally understanding it. What are the different levels? I know um, Pierre mentioned that uh, Leo, his autism is sort of mild. What, what's the difference in terms of the spectrum? That, that well, the spectrum is so huge that it's really hard to say because there's Asperger syndrome, there's uh, PDD, there, there's just so many different uh, levels of <laughs> autism. But what I can say for Leo is that he is high functioning because he's verbal. He does speak, he does interact. Um, we're just trying to get him to interact in a good way right now, like asking for things nicely, sharing. Um, he does he does want to play with others so he's not totally isolated mm -hmm. which in some other cases where they're low functioning you would see them isolated fixated on one thing only um, not nonverbal so this for Leo it's good because like I said he's very uh, interactive <laughs> Pierre Gru's son, uh, Leo, was recently diagnosed with autism. Has he spoken to you at all? And if he did, what would you tell him? We have not spoken. Uh, when, when I found out that I was going to do this sit down with you and Pierre had a son, I didn't know that. And so, no, we will definitely visit. Uh, yeah, it's difficult. Uh, what I will say to him, he's got a long, difficult road ahead of him. I wish I could tell him that there's a formula that if you do this, this, and this, everything's going to be okay. Um, obviously, there's different levels. And my son is very severe. He's nonverbal. He uh, needs help with most day-to-day -day things that he does. So he's gonna be with us, with my wife and I for our lifetime. But, um, you know, he's got a lot of challenges ahead and, and uh, uh, I, I tend to try to be honest with people and say, listen, you know, you're gonna have to, to, to be strong, but at the same time, you're gonna have to reach out to people and, and there's, a, there's a lot of people that are affected by this. And, uh, you, you know, you have to use um, those people for support and, and um, just realize that this is, this, you know, there's a lot of kids out there that are affected by many different issues, whether it's neurological disorders, handicaps, um, you know, and, and obviously even worse, kids that are dying young from cancer or whatever the case is. So, but it's a tough boat to be in and I'll tell them I'll be there to help them any way I can. People just, uh, they think that everything is normal. They don't want to face that their kids may have something. Um, they don't want to title them or what they call as labeled. Mm -hmm. They don't want their children to be labeled. So they kind of make excuses all the time like, oh, okay, he's flapping, it's okay. Or, oh, he's stimming or he's, he just doesn't like noise because it's too loud, which a lot of kids who suffer from autism have uh, sensitization, uh, sensitive to noise. Well, when your kid's born, you know, with 10 fingers and 10 toes and they look uh, typical, um, you know, you think that everything's fine. So. Uh, I think as parents get, their kids are two, three, four years old and they get these diagnoses later, mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of times they're in de denial feeling like, well, you know, that, that can't be. But, but sometimes you, if, you, if you don't deal with it head on and right away, mm -hmm. those early years where, the, where their brain is developing are very important to getting them to the best level you can get them to and to, to, to ignore it for a year even and, and want to not believe it. Is, is something that can really hurt the child down the road. Don't be afraid. It's, it's not, yeah, it's, it's an handicap, but at the same time, to me, it's, it's just making sure that you get uh, your, your kid the help that he needs, uh, he or she needs, um, because it's, it's not just a, well, we can't help him, but with therapy, 
you develop, uh, the earlier you diagnose, the better. And the more therapy you do with, with your child, the more um, when he gets to school, it's not Leo, the autistic child. It's it's hey, here comes Leo. So it's the the, the earlier you diagnose, the better it is for your child to to get to have a typical childhood. Thanks so much, Pierre. Thank you.